Okay, Chapter 3, Early Greek Mathematics in our course, uh, History of Math at the University of Montana. Um, just to give you a quick overview of where we've been, we're talking about um, the early Greeks. Uh, we, we took a look at Thales, Pythagor the, the Pythagorean uh, notions of arithmetic and figurate numbers, as well as their early notions of geometry that led into the crisis of incommensurable quantities. Um, and then we left off where we were talking about early Greek construction problems. We discussed the quadrature of the circle. We discussed Hippocrates' squaring of the loon uh, and the duplication of the, the cube. Um, some of these are impossible constructions that, of course, um, occupied mathematicians' efforts for hundreds of years. Um, but one of special interest is the trisection of the angle. You know, we know of a sequence of constructions that make it very easy to bisect any angle, but the question is, is, is there some sequence of constructions that allow for trisection? And um, you know, there was, uh, for example, many constructions presented, such as this one, which are considered to be illegal constructions because a marked um, straight edge is used in the construction. But one interesting object that emerged from the effort to find the trisection or solve the trisection question is this idea of this special curve called the quadratrix. It's, it's kind of one of the first examples of, of, of uh, you know, a curve as a locus of points that satisfy a certain... Um, uh, a certain, I guess, geometric um, uh, requirement. So in a sense, it's sort of one of the first non-circular um, graphs that we get in the history of math. Um, to understand the quadratrix, it's probably easiest to watch it be constructed. Um, so taking a quick look again at the GeoGebra applet that I, or I guess GeoGebra file that I made, and you can see that, that the quadratrix, which is the red um, locus of points there, is um, it's 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 this curve that's created when I guess the ceiling of a of a square is is allowed to fall um, um, and and then they let's say uh, the the radius of a circle inscribed in the square um, in such a way that I guess the side length is the is a radius side length of the square is the radius of a circle so it's really a quarter circle it's allowed to open um, and they're both move at, at, a, at a rate such that they when they both I guess hit the bottom of the square um, they do so in um, a synonymous fashion or at the same time um, so if, if you want to think about what this thing is doing I guess the way I think about it is is that it's mapping um, distances to angles so for example if I pause right here then I can see that this has fallen half the distance of the square um, whereas, uh, you know, so that must mean that I must be at, at half the opening of the angle. Um, you know, if I grab this point and um, I thought I could grab that point. Uh, oh, it's this point. Sorry. If I grab this point and, and rotate it down even for, farther, if, if this was, for example, um, a quarter um, or three quarters of the length, I guess, that it has fallen, then, then I would assume that this angle has opened up um, to three quarters of the value of the full angle, which uh, so three quarters of 90 degrees. So in a sense, what this allows you to do is to sort of say, well, if I could find the spot on the segment here that's one third uh, of the full segment, then this would have to be a 30 degree angle because it would have to be one third of the full angle, which is 90. But uh, of course, you can play this game for, for arbitrary segments too. Um, so starting, for example, with a segment like uh, I don't know, of length here, of this length, if I could cut that segment into thirds, um, then that should cut this angle into a third. So I don't know, eyeballing it maybe somewhere in there, about a third of the, of the original angle. So the idea is that it's a tool that allows you to take segments of a given length and chop them up into, I guess, uh, fractions of that segment, which will then um, predict um, fractions of angles in the same proportion. Okay, so let's see how the quadratrix was used um, to trisect an angle. I'll go ahead and go to my overhead here. Um, and here's a picture of the quadratrix. I, I handed this out in class. Um, but before you understand the quadratrix, you really have to understand, um, well, how you can trisect um, a segment. So let's just uh, go through that construction, make sure that you're all aware that there is um, actually a construction that allows you to trisect an angle, or excuse me, a segment. So if, for example, I start with a segment AB, and my goal is to come up with a sequence of constructions and some logic perhaps that allows me to find, I don't know, like the, the point up here 
that's exactly one third of the distance from uh, A to B, um, which could then be copied down here so you could trisect it. Um, and so trisecting um, a segment turns out to be fairly simple. Um, the idea is that you first construct another segment that's not, um, I guess, coincident with the segment that you're trying to, to trisect, and it shares one of the endpoints. Set your compass at a certain constant distance and mark off um, three of those um, distances. Um, call that third distance, I guess, C, and then connect up C to B. Uh, and so we get a triangle. And um, what uh, y you might be thinking is, well, geez, if I could find the line that's parallel to BC through this point, let's call it uh, D, then uh, we'd have similar triangles. Uh, and those similar triangles would have a scale factor of 2 to 3. Um, and if they had a scale factor of 2 to 3, wherever that parallel line intersects AB would give me the one-third point um, from A to B um, in there. So that's the, the general gist of the idea. Um, usually the way I do uh, copy angles is, is I, just, um, I just copy a little triangle um, at the angle I'm trying to copy. So for example, if I kind of think of this guy as a triangle, um, if I could copy that triangle right here, then one of its sides would tell me, um, you know, the the line, the correct line. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to put my uh, compass here at D and scribe this length. Well, okay, so that length is equal to that length, and this length is equal to this length. But I need to copy this length onto here, and so that's what I'll do. This is a side 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 angle uh, copy. You know, I'm really relying on side 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 triangle congruence. So somewhere right in there. Um, I guess I'll be very careful about this. Okay, I think I'm okay. So now I've, I've effectively uh, copied um, this little triangle here, there. And I can go ahead then and run. Yeah, that looks pretty parallel, I'd say. Um, A, B, C, D, let's call this point E. Um, so now let's think about what happened here. So if I if I copied that angle right there to here, so that angle is congruent, which means the angle on the other side of it, the straight edge or straight line, will be congruent. So we'll call those two angles angles one. We'll call the angle up here two. So I would say one two three would be the third angle over there. Well, if I have one two here, then this one's going to have to be three as well. So what we can see is that we have triangle ADE similar to triangle ACB by angle-angle uh, similarity. And if that's the case, then sides are in proportion. Um, so let's see, AD is to, uh, um, let's see, so let's see, AD um, is to AC uh, so this is to that as AE is to AB. But we know that AD is to DC mm, as 2 is to 3, right? Um, so I guess we can take this out of um, um, the, the, the right-hand equality here and just say that um, um, AE is to AB. Uh, as 2 is to 3. Um, so I guess, therefore, we can conclude that um, EB is going to be equal to one-third of the distance of AB. I guess here I would say um, AE is equal to two-thirds AB, right? So this is two-thirds of AB, so that must mean that EB is one-third of AB. And so there you have it. There's one way that you can you can um, trisect, and in fact, you can find any um, rational division of a segment this way by just doing as many copies as you need to find the rational number that you want. So, in this case, doing three copies allowed me me to find one third. If we did four copies of of the length here and connected up the same construction, we could find the quarter, um, and so on and so forth. So there you go. That's the way that you um, first, um, I guess, trisect a segment. Of course, we could copy that segment down here um, and find the other, I guess, distance, right? So.
could be like that. So third, third, and third on that segment. Okay, so how do we use that now to um, trisect an angle using the quadratrix? So here we go. We're going to give this a shot. Um, and uh, it's, it's really pretty straightforward. It's, it's not, um, but you do need to know, of course, this. So let's draw an arbitrary angle centered at this uh, corner and call that angle theta. So if I call that arbitrary angle theta, then um, what I'm looking for is, well, how do I construct one-third theta? And of course, the first thing you're going to notice is that if you, you know, if you draw any angle um, less than or equal to 90, uh, or I guess less, strictly less than 90, then um, it's going to intersect with the quadratrix. Let's call that intersection point A. Um, and then um, the, the question is, is you, know, you, you have to drop a perpendicular um, to, um, to this side. So let's see, we're going to draw theta and then drop a perpendicular. So how do we drop a perpendicular? So let's think about that a bit. So one way that you can construct a perpendicular is, is a perpendicular line is to, uh, I'm going to set my compass to be um, this distance. Um, so the distance from, let's call it uh, Q here or something like that. So I'll set my compass to be equal to AQ, and I'll um, scribe this segment, um, or I guess this arc. I get two of these, um, and then I'll scribe another arc here, and I get uh, keep the distance the same. So in a sense, what we have is side, 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 congruent to side, side, side. So these two triangles that are constructed by the points are, are congruent. Um, so it's a rhombus, and, and so this would be the diagonal of a rhombus, and so would that. And since the diagonals of rhombuses are perpendicular, we've dropped a perpendicular from A to, I guess, the base here. And we'll call that um, point B, since it was the second point constructed. Okay. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to take this segment, which, you know, if you notice it, it's really kind of the same thing as this segment over here. And I need it to find its, its one-third point. I need to, to chop it into thirds, right? So there is a, a construction that would allow me to chop that into thirds. And that's the one we just saw. So I'll do that quickly. And maybe you can follow along. So I'll just draw some random line out here. And I'll set my compass at some small measure and mark off three. Um, let's see, how's, how's that look like? One, two three. So then if we kind of think of it this way, uh, we're trying to construct a line that's parallel to this line right here. Mm, that was kind of bad. I don't like that. Um, I think I have it all right. So parallel to this line, but um, so but I want it to be a third, so it would be passing through this particular point right here. Um, so how would I do that? Let's see. So one way I could do that is to copy this angle up here, um, or no, actually I want to copy. I want to copy uh, that angle right there. So I don't know. We'll do a, a short. <coughs> I'll just use the same distance I've used already. Uh, so I want to copy that angle right there, but I want to copy it right here. Um, okay, so that would be the distance from here to here, and now I need to copy this distance from here to here on this. Okay, so it looks like this line is the one that will be. Make sure I get it parallel to that line mm -hmm. by copying this angle. I guess we'll call it 1 down here. And since this ratio is 1 to 3, then of course this ratio is 1 to 3. And <coughs> I guess the last thing we need to do is we need to find out um, sort of where, let's call this point C. We need to find the perpendicular, I guess, to C. If we, if we know that that takes, you know, sort of this segment and chops it by a third, 
Um, so then what we would do is, is we would sort of picture the quadratrix horizontal line coming out here and intersecting this curve someplace in such a way that then we could draw through the one-third angle. Um, so uh, how do we draw a perpendicular to this side passing through C? Um, again, I would just use my rhombus method here. So um, I would set C to be um, the vertex of a rhombus. Uh, let's let it be CQ, the side length of the rhombus. So let's see if I have enough space. I think I do. So CQ. Would, so now I have distance, 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 the same. So it's a, it's a rhombus. Um, and if I pass, oh, it's dangerously close to that. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm basically finding the horizontal um, through C. Um, and maybe I should just go ahead and draw that completely out so that you can see it. So it's the perpendicular to this side um, that passes through C and intersects the quadratrix there. At that point, we're going to call it D. So in a sense, what we've done is we've taken this distance and chopped it by a third and then mapped it out to the quadratrix, which should take this angle which is associated, sorry, this angle, which is associated with this side, and chop it to a third of its size. So let's go ahead and draw in then this angle right here. And we're saying that one is theta, and we're saying this one is theta over 3. And, uh, you know, the big question is, is it really theta over 3 um, you know, or not? I mean, and it certainly should be by the way the uh, quadratrix is constructed. Um, but you might <coughs> want to actually measure it and see if it is, or it seems to um, be exactly that. Or we could cut out a little wedge and try to, to measure the three angles and see. But that's it. That's the way the quadratrix is used. Um, we, we start with an angle. We map it to a side. Um, and we try to cut that um, that side down by third um, so this distance becomes um, cut by a third and then it's mapped back out to the quadratrix which tells you then what angle will be a third of the original angles measure all right that's it for the quadratrix um, and uh, hope they have some fun playing around with that idea